hello everyone welcome to all of you so we are discussing about uh, unit number one it is reproduction and uh, in this chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants we have already discussed uh, about structure of flower and in this lecture we are going to learn about stem and microsporangium uh, and uh, microsporogenesis so actually it is pre-fertilization event right so we have already gone through what is pre-fertilization event it is formation of a gamete and transfer of gamete right so let's have a look on formation of gamete so in case of plant there will be a microsporogenesis or but before that we need to you know understand about structure of that uh, part or that portion so it is stamen so in which microsporogenesis is occur right so you know decision of making of that flower it is already been taken you can see here these are the some birds so there will be a you know some hormonal and structural changes will be initiated and that's the reason some uh, floral primordium or we can say that a, a floral bird it will be formed let's say this is axillary bird so it will be formed and from this axillary bird you know such a big or large bird will be formed and from this bird flower will be formed you can see here these all things are birds and uh, from that birds flower will be formed so uh, in case of flower we have already seen that you know male reproductive organ we can uh, call it androsium and female reproductive organ it is gynosium so male reproductive organ it is consist of anther and stamen and female reproductive organ it is consist of stigma style and ovary so we have already gone through it right now let's have, uh, have a look on stamen so you know stamen it is consist of anther and filament so this is terminal portion of that filament it is attached with the anther right so this mcq may be asked to you which part of uh, filament it is attached with the anther so it is terminal portion of anther it is attached with this anther and this is proximal part so this proximal part it is attached with the uh, basal basilary structure of flower so why this is terminal uh, why this is proximal because you know the arising of filament it will be started from uh, it had started from here that's the reason and actually it is growing so and this is completely grown uh, stamen so that's the reason this is terminal portion right so it is not matter of rod reading right so uh, this is the structure of stamen we can say here this is transfer section of stamen uh, this is one lobe so this is one lobe this is second lobe. so there will be a two lobe so we can say the uh, typical angiosperm anther it is bi lobed bi means two and each lobe having we can say this is you know uh, thicker so each lobe having two thicker so when it comes to lobe so it is di thickus right so and it, when it comes to anther so it is by lobe so hope that makes sense there will be a two lobe and each lobe having two thicker that's the reason it is di thickus so in, in a just few seconds we are going to see about you know how these things are work so actually there are microsporangium and in this microsporangium uh, pollen will be formed so you can see here this is anther of the flower these are the anther and in this anther you can say that the pollen grain will form so actually microsporangium develop further and become pollen sac so this is microsporangium we can say we can say so microsporangium will be convert into a you know pollen sac and pollen grain will be uh, produced in it and uh, on the basis of this uh, you know filament we have already look on type of uh, various anther like it is a uh, monodelphus didelphus so we have already gone through about this although you can pause this video and uh, you can check this right and on the basis of you know attachment of this filament with this uh, anther we have already look various type of this this is basic fixed basic means basal part fixed means fixation so at the basal part it is fixed that's the reason it is basis fixed and this is adnet means you know this is a uh, middle side actually and uh, filament it is attached and this is dorsal side filament it is attached that's the reason it is dorsifixed 
as well this certain and you know there is some divergent structure that's the reason this is divergent and this is district type type of anther because you know some destruction we can say there is, uh, one portion it is here and another it is here that's the reason now let's uh, have a look on the structure of microsporangium so microsporangium this is microsporangium right so we can say this is figure a and it is a uh, this is transfer section of the uh, anther see this is anther and if you will cut transversely so you will find such a structure if you magnify this structure so it will be having such you know a figure and uh, if you will magnify this portion for example this is microsporangium uh, so you will get a various layer see this is epidermis outer layer and then there will be endothecia and middle layers and tapetum so this is fourth layer but so before before that you need to understand this thing there will be a you know as i told you earlier, the, earlier this is one lobe and this is another lobe right so in each lobe there will be a two theca so actually this lobe is connected with uh, one type of tissue and it is known as a connective tissue right and uh, these are the various layers of uh, that microsporangium so after maturity it will be you know brushed and a pollen grain will be come out from that microsporangium so there are four layer as i discussed and uh, outer this three layer have only one function it is and it is protection right and this tapetum has a function it will be provide nourishment or we can say nutrition to the developing pollen grain and uh, this tapetum cell will be having two nucleus or we can say binucleated right so why it is binucleated because you know it is it has a one duty one job that it will provide nourishment or nutrition to the developing pollen grain and because if it will be having two nucleus so it can provide more nutrition or we can say more nourishment to the developing pollen grain and how how this tapetum cell could become binucleated so answer will be a mitosis so we can say from one cell we are getting two cell through the process of mitosis right so in mitosis first you know nuclear division will be there so from one nucleus we will be uh, having two nucleus right so because and uh, division of nucleus we can say it is karyokinesis and because this karyokinesis will not followed by cytokinesis so there will be a not cytokinesis that's the reason the cell of this tapetum will be binucleated now microsporogenesis so we can say there are you know microspore mother cell or we can say sporogenous tissue so there will be a sporogenous tissue and actually it is it will be having microspore mother cell so this microspore mother cell will be divided meiotically uh, there will be a meiosis one and uh, for example you know this microspore mother cell we can say pollen mother cell it is deployed means to end and because it is divided uh, by the meiosis that's the reason there will be a you know reduction division it is so there will be a n n and after meiosis two will be having 4n so this process it is known as a microsporogenesis why it is microsporogenesis because you know pollen grain it is smaller than the egg cell and micro means pollen grain and genesis means formation because you know here pollen grain it is forming that's the reason this whole process known as a microsporogenesis so what would be a ploidy of this a tetrad or we can say this uh, you know this uh, nucleus so it will be n n means haploid right because it is divided by the meiosis or you can say reductional division it is there that's the reason the ploidy of this tetrad or microspore so it it is haploid right and uh, this tetrad actually it is pollen grain so after maturation of this pollen grain will you know come out from this you can see here there are large number pollen grain will be there so 
I have already gone through about this uh, you know description although you can pause this video and uh, you can read this uh, content so in next lecture we are going to discuss about pollen grain right so i hope this video may be helpful to you if you like this video so kindly subscribe this channel and share with your friends thank you